Now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Faber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. Got a postcard from a listener up in Canada who said they really enjoyed Gunsmoke. And a lot of you have said you really enjoy Gunsmoke. Uh, in fact, we got some uh, notes through ClassicRadio.stream that said that uh, you liked, uh, you never liked the TV Gunsmoke, didn't listen to the radio version until you listened to uh, William Conrad as Marshall Matt Dillon. And you said, hey, these really good shows. So let's enjoy Gunsmoke starring William Conrad. From January 1st, 1955, this episode entitled, The Bottle Man. Gunsmoke. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. Transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. Is that stage supposed to be here, Chester? Oh, sometimes this afternoon, Doc. They ain't quite sure. You mean they're not sure it'll come at all? Now, that ain't what I said. I said they ain't sure when. Oh. Well, I've heard of stages that don't come at all. Gracious, you ain't very cheery today, Doc. What's the matter, lose a couple of cash patients last night? No, I didn't lose any patients last night. I lost $50 at Faro. Ah, oh, well. What's fifty dollars to a rich man like you? Oh yes, which if you and everybody else paid your bills once in a while, I'd be a rich man. Hey, there she comes, Doc. Oh, <clears throat> golly, I hope Mr. Dillon's on it. Uh, you mean you're waiting here and you don't even know he's coming? Ah, uh, he'll be there, and with Big Jim Kelly too. Kelly, who's that? Oh, for pity's sake, you sure are ignorant, Doc. Ignorant of what? Thieves and murderers and scallywags? Big and... Jim Kelly is wanted for burning down a hotel in Wichita. Yeah, arson. Arson? No, Doc, I said he's wanted for burning down never a mind, hotel. Never mind, never mind. Oh, there he is, there he is. He's coming, he's coming. <laughs> yeah, uh, hello, Matt. <laughs> hey, he's all alone. Uh, maybe he shot him to save the price of the stage fair, Chester. Oh, Doc, <laughs> Mr. Dillon wouldn't do that. Oh, Doc. Hi. Chester. How are you, Matt? Hey, where's Big Jim Kelly, Mr. Dillon? I don't know, Chester. <laughs> you didn't catch him? Well, I got close enough to put salt on his tail, but he got away. Well, how in the world did that happen? Well, he, uh, outsmarted me, Chester. <laughs> well, what's new in Dodge, anyway? Well, Doc lost $50 at Faro last night. Oh, that's not new, Chester. Besides, it's perfectly legal. Oh, uh, you mean has there been any trouble, huh? Uh, no, sir. It's been real quiet, Mr. Dillon. Except last night when Cassidy got beat up. Cassidy? Now, who'd beat him up? I hadn't heard of that, Chester. Boy, Cassidy is the mildest mannered man I ever saw. Even in his cups. And he's been in his cups for ten solid years now I, I, that I know of. What happened, Chester? Oh, that gambler, Bill Clell. Oh, he come here since you left, Mr. Dillon. He, he brought a girl with him named Flora. What about Clell and Cassidy? Well, nobody's seen it, but Clell admits beating him up. Well, why? 
He says Cassidy walked up to him, tried to club him with a bottle. Oh, I don't believe that. Cassidy wouldn't attack a wood fence. Is he hurt much, Chester? He don't look very good, but he'll be all right, Mr. Dillon. Say, man, I don't believe this Clell. There's something wrong with his story. Well, I'll go by there tonight and have a talk with him, Doc. But right now, let's go get something to eat, huh? Do you see Clell anywhere, Chester? No, sir, I don't. I guess he ain't come in yet tonight, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Look, uh, you go get your beer. I'm going to go over and say hello to Kitty over there. Okay, sir. But you come tell me when he does come in, huh? Yes, sir, I will. Okay. Well, evening, Kitty. Hello, Matt. I hear you came back empty-handed. Oh, how did you know that? Oh, everybody knows it. You know, and all the time I was thinking that nobody even knew I'd gone after a man. It's hard to keep secrets in Dodge, Matt. I've tried it myself. Yeah. Well, there's one I'd like to uncover, Kitty. What was this man Clell doing beating up Cassidy last night? Well, I heard it was Cassidy went after him. Huh? Took a bottle to him, they say. Who says? You're right. Nobody saw it. But the way Clell told it, he was just as surprised as anybody. I have to admit, I kind of believe him, Matt. Oh, no, Kitty, you know Cassidy wouldn't attack anybody. But don't get me wrong. I'm not standing up for Clell. In fact, I don't even like him. Oh, what's wrong with him? Well, he's no good. I can tell by the way he treats Flora. She's a real unhappy girl, Matt. Well, that's no business of mine. But I don't like the idea of a poor, harmless, drunk like Cassidy taking it from him. Hey, there's Flora now. You want to meet her? Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Flora! Flora! Pretty little thing, isn't she? Yeah, she is. Hello, Kitty. Did you want me? You got a minute, honey? I want you to meet Marshal Dillon. Oh! Are you the Marshal? I'm pleased to know you, Flora. Uh, want you to sit down? Thanks. But I can't stay long. Mr. Clell will be in directly. Oh? Uh -huh. You, uh, work for Clell, Flora? My job's to steer people over to his faro table and then try to keep them there. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, how long have you known Clell? All my life, I guess. What? Oh, he sort of adopted me when I was five. When my mother died. I'm only 18 now, Marshal. Well, that's mighty young. You, uh look a little older than that. I wish I was ten years older. Oh, why? Then maybe I could get away from him somehow. Oh, please, d don't tell him that. No, 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 of course, of course I won't. He married me last year. Oh? Oh, there he is now. He just came in. I I I'd better go. The tall man, Matt, the Black Derby. Yeah, I see him. <laughs> I thought he'd be older. He only looks about 35. I'll be darned. There's Cassidy, too. Looks like he's following him. Yeah, he is. And he's got a gun in his hand. He's going to shoot him, Matt. Uh, can't even hold that gun steady with both hands, Cassidy. I'm going to kill you, Clell. Put that gun away, Cassidy. I'll handle him. <laughs> That's just about enough for you, Cassidy. I'm going to break every bone in your body. All right, hold it, Clell. Stop kicking him. Mister, stay out of this. You kick him once more and you'll wake up in jail. Jail? Why, who are you? I'm the marshal here. Well, then why don't you arrest Cassidy? Didn't you see him try to shoot me? I saw him. Now, what's the trouble between you two? Look, marshal, I give you my word, I never saw this drunken bum before in my life. Took a bottle to me last night. This time he's got a gun. There must be something behind this, Clell. Cassidy's one of the most peaceful men in Dodge. Well, I swear it, I never saw him before. I'll tell you one thing, Marshal. Next time I see him, I'm going to kill him. Chester. Yes, sir. Cassidy's still out. Get him over to Doc's, will you? I'll come by there later. Yes, sir. I'll do it, Mr. Clell, if Cassidy tries to kill you, it's your right to protect yourself. But don't do it with your feet. Cassidy's friends might not like it. 
and I'm one of them. January 1st, 1955, Gunsmoke on Classic Radio Theater. Thanks for tuning in to Classic Radio Theater here on your favorite station. Now more of Gunsmoke starring William Conrad, January 1st, 1955. <laughs> Hello, Doc. Oh, how you feeling, Cassidy? I'm okay, Marshal. Oh, you're so full of booze, you don't know how you feel, Cassidy. I told you, you've got two broken ribs. It don't matter, I've had worse. Cassidy, what do you have to clow for? Why did you try to shoot him tonight? Thirteen years of hard drinking is lovely to think about. It's bad on the aim, Marshal. I had to hold that gun in both hands. He hit me before I get it off. Why were you trying to shoot him? I don't like his face. Doc, w- will you do something for me? Sure, sure, yes, Cassidy. What is it? Make me sober. <clears throat> what? I, I mean real sober. Oh, I ain't going to quit forever, but... I want to get sober for a spell. Well, I'm sorry, Cassidy. Medicine has no idea how to treat a man who drinks like you. No idea at all. There's nothing you can do? Nothing. If you want to get sober, you'll have to do it yourself. How? Stop drinking. Okay. I'll do it. If Marshall will help me. Me help you? Lock me up in jail, Marshall, and don't let me out for, for about a week. I, I can't drink that way. Y- you'll do it, won't you? Well, ordinarily, I'd do anything I could to help you, Cassidy, but... Uh, no, not this time. Why not? Because you want to get sober so you can kill a man. Then I'll do it without your help. Oh, don't worry, Matt. He'll never stay sober long enough to do any harm. I never saw a man like him stop drinking yet. You never saw a man had a reason like I have, Doc. What is your reason, Cassidy? I'll tell you later, Marshal. When you come to hang me. Good morning, Mr. Dillon. Morning, Chester. Ah, where's the mail? Well, it's in, but they ain't got it sorted out yet. I'll go back and get it later. Okay. You expecting something important? No, nothing special, Chester, but uh, you never know. My. Sometimes I think we'd be better off if there wasn't no mail, no telegraphs, no trains, no stages, no nothing like that. Well, I wish we had more. And maybe we could find out what happened to Cassidy. He's been missing a whole week now. Oh, for heaven's sake, Mr. Dillon, I plumb forgot. That's the first thing I meant to tell you. Well, how how could I forget that? I swear I must be getting what old. It seemed you... like every time I started... Chester, what, what did you forget? A- about Cassidy. I seen him in the street just now. You did? Well, where is he? I want to talk to him. He was leaning on that building right next door. Drunk? No, sir, he didn't look it. He looked plumb sober. I'll go see if he's still there, will you? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, there he is. Cassidy! Hey, Cassidy! Come here a minute. He's coming, Mr. Dillon. Uh, come on in, Cassidy. Marshal wants to say hello. I ain't got much time, Chester. Well, you got a minute, ain't you? Close the door, Chester. What do you want, Marshal? Ah, you had everybody worried, Cassidy. Where, uh, where you been the past week, huh? I've been out on the prairie, Marshal. There ain't no whiskey out there. Oh, I see. 
Well, you look fine. I ain't had a drop since I left Doc that night. How are your ribs? Oh, I breathe hard, but that don't bother me. Mm-hmm. I, uh, see that you got a gun in your belt. I have. I can shoot it with one hand now. Still after Clell, huh? You can hang me later, Marshal. It don't matter. But right now, you can't do nothing but talk. Why don't you tell me what this is all about, Cassidy? We're friends, aren't we? You was always a friend to me, Marshal. And I don't like to cause you no trouble, but I can't help it this time. It's just gotta be. Well, okay, Cassidy. You don't want me to help you, but uh, I'm gonna do it anyway. You can't help me. Yes, I can. Now, give me your gun. No, no, Marshal. No, no, you got no right. Now, give don't. Give me the gun. Mm-hmm. There. Buy me another one. Chester. Yes, sir. Lock him up. Lock me up? No, you can't do that. It ain't legal. I ain't done nothing. To stop you from killing a man's plenty legal the way I look at it, Cassidy. All right, put him in his cage, Chester. Come on, Cassidy, and don't you try nothing. No, wait, no, you can't lock me up. Clell might get away. You want me to carry you? Uh, all right. Fine, I'll tell you, Marshal. I'll tell you. Leave him be, Chester. Well... Go ahead, Cassidy. Tell me. Who is Clell? Thirteen years ago, Marshal, down in New Orleans, Clell ran off with my wife. He did? And then how come he claims that he doesn't know you? He don't know me. I changed my name, and I only seen him once before. My wife told me she was leaving, and I watched him get on the riverboat. Clell, my wife, my little girl. Your little girl? Flora was only five then. Flora? You mean Flora's your daughter? She don't remember me. I don't want her ever to know uh, now the way I am. Promise you won't tell her? No, no, of course I won't. But Clell's married to Flora now. Uh, What happened to your wife? Uh, They got married, but later I heard she ran off. She had to get away from him. I think she's dead, Marshal. I think she killed herself. Look, Cassidy, shooting Clell isn't going to help anything now. I ain't going to kill him because of me, Marshal. I'm doing it for Flora. Uh, I can tell. She wants to get away from him, too. Yeah, I know she does. I'm going to do it, Marshal. I don't mind hanging. I'm going to help Flora. Clell's done a lot to you, Cassidy, but there's nothing in the world I know of that justifies murder. I don't hold with killing people either, Marshal, but I'm going to do it. Cassidy, listen to me. If I get Flora away from Clell... Would you be satisfied? How are you going to do that? Well, you leave him alone if I do. I told you it's for floor I'm thinking about. The other thing, oh, that, that's too long past. I buried that in a thousand whiskey bottles, Marshal. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Uh, do you have any money, Cassidy? If I didn't work now and then, I couldn't drink. How much have you got? No, oh, about $50. All right, give it to me. What? I said give it to me. Oh. Well, here it is, Marshal. That's all I got. It's enough. Now, look, I want you to lay low, Cassidy. Stay out of sight for a while. Will you do that? I'll do it. But I'll be watching. This better not take too long, Marshal. Chester. Yes, sir. Go find Kitty, will you? Tell her to get Flora over to her room and be sure that Clell doesn't know where she is. Okay, Mr. Dillon. Tell Kitty I'll meet him there in about an hour. Oh, and you better hang around outside somewhere, huh? In case Clell gets interested and shows up. Here, Matt. Come on in. Oh, thanks, Kitty. Ah, hello, Flora. Is there something wrong, Marshal? Uh, yes, I think so. I told you, Kitty. I knew there was. Now, Flora, don't get upset. Whatever it is, I'm sure the Marshal isn't after you. Give him a chance to explain. Is it about Mr. Clell, Marshal? It's about you, Flora. But I haven't done anything. No, you haven't done anything, Flora, but I'm going to help you do something. 
I don't understand. Tell me, if you were alone, free from Clell, where would you go? Oh, I tried to run away before, but he caught me. He beat me something terrible. Well, he won't catch you this time, Flora. Now, where do you want to go? Can you find a job in St. Louis? I'd like to go to New Orleans. Mr. Clell says I was born there. I'm sure I could find something to do there. I always wanted to go. Okay, here's a hundred dollars, Flora. Now, that'll get you to New Orleans and keep you till you find work. January 1st, 1955, Gunsmoke. Thank you for tuning in to Classic Radio Theater. You know, if you feel like you're stuck with a health care plan you don't like, right now is a great time to switch to MediShare. They'll waive your new member fee if you join by January 15th. So that's $170 in addition to all the other savings. The typical family saves $500 or more per month. And MediShare has double the customer satisfaction rate when compared to health insurance. Double. Again, join by January 15th and save even more. Call 833-34-BIBLE. That's 833-34-BIBLE. Mike Lindell, the inveteran CEO of MyPillow, wants to give back to listeners. You can get great discounts on all MyPillow products if you go to MyPillow.com. Click on the radio listener special, deep discounts on all MyPillow products, like the buy one, get one free special on Giza Dream Sheets. All MyPillow products come with a 60-day money-back guarantee, 10-year warranty. Call 1-800-951-8175 or go to MyPillow.com. Click on the radio listener special. Use my promo code USA. Now on Classic Radio Theater, the conclusion of Gunsmoke, The Bottle Man, as originally broadcast January 1st, 1955. A hundred dollars? Oh, Marshall, I can't take that. Yes, you can. Now go on, take it. Why are you giving it to me? Well, you're young. you still got a life ahead of you. That's reason enough. It's no use, Marshal. Mr. Clell had never let me go. Where is Clell now? At the Long Branch Gambling. He'll be expecting me there soon. All right, then you'll have to hurry. There's a train out at one o'clock. That'll only give you about a half hour. But I can't go like this. What about my things? Go get what you need. Kitty will help you. Sure, I will. Come on, Flora. But if Mr. Clell finds me... I'll be at the depot. If Clell does find you, it won't do him any good. I'll see that you get on that train alone, Flora. She better hurry, Mr. Dillon. Stand a piece about to leave. Kitty will see that she gets here, Chester. Don't worry. Yes, sir. Hey, I thought you told Cassidy to lay low. I did. What? And now what's he up to? Guess he wants to talk to you. What are you doing here, Cassidy? I know what you're doing, Marshal. I figured it all out. Especially when I seen Flora and Kitty going back to her room. They're on the way down here now. I thought you didn't want Flora to know about you. I don't, Marshal. I'm going to stand over there by the building. I only want to see her leave. It'll be the last... There time. they come. You better get going. I'm going. Oh, that poor fellow. Come on, Marshal. Take Flora's bag, will you, Chester, and throw it on the train for her? Sure. Here, give me your bag, Flora. I'll take care of it for you. Thanks, Chester. Now I'll go find your seat. I thought we'd never make it, Matt. Oh, you barely did. Well, Flora, we'll uh, say goodbye here. You better follow Chester. Goodbye, Marshal. I don't know why you're doing this, but... Well... <laughs> I just can't seem to say anything. You don't have to. Good luck. Goodbye, honey. I'm awful happy for you. You'll make out fine. I know you will. I kind of hate to leave you, Kitty. You get going. Train's about to leave. Go on now. <sighs> All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. She's a good girl, Matt. Yeah, she is. And I'm kind of wondering myself why you're doing this. Well, I'll tell you, Kitty. Later. Oh, they're about to leave. Now she'll make it. What about Chester? He's still in the car there. <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter. He's always wanted to go to St. Louis. Anyway. Matt, look. What? It's Clell. He's after her. 
Hey, you stay here, Kenny. Yeah, hurry, Matt. Laura, don't you get on that train? You all right, Flora? He's dead, Marshal. Get on the train, Flora. But I... Come on, hurry. Go on, move. All right. He shot him, Mr. Dillon. I seen him through the train window. Yeah, I saw him, Chester. Now, here he comes now. Watch him. Yes, sir. I killed him. I killed him, Marshal. Here's my gun. Take it. I should have locked this gun up. You went back to the office for it, didn't you? I thought something would go wrong. And it almost did, too. I'd have stopped him, Cassidy. You wouldn't have killed him, Marshal. He can't ever follow her now. You're under arrest, Cassidy. You can hang me. I don't care. Only one thing, Marshal. Yeah, I know. Chester, I'll lock him up. You go buy him a bottle, will you? He's been sober long enough. No, no, Marshal. That's what I was going to say. I kind of like it this way. I ain't feeling sorry for myself no more. I'm through drinking the rest of my life. However long that's going to be. Cassidy. Yeah? <sighs> Nothing. All right, come on. Walk ahead of me. Produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Eleanor Tannen, and Ralph Moody. Parley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. January 1st, 1955, Gunsmoke on Classic Radio Theater. Now on Classic Radio Theater, the soap opera Claudia. This originally broadcast January 1st, 1948. Oh, darling, I wish we weren't going to Julia and Hartley's. I wish we were going home. Why do they always have to have people over at the drop of a holiday? Mm, we'll only stay a few minutes. Just long enough to wish them a happy new year. Then we'll skadoodle. Besides, I, I don't think she expects a crowd. That's good. Will she have eggnog? Mm -hmm. I love the nog part, but I could do without the egg. Well, here we are. David, how do I look? Beautiful. You didn't even look. I didn't have to. You're beautiful. David, what's the matter? That chauffeur. What's the matter with him? He's Daphne Baker's chauffeur. That's what's the matter with him. Oh, Daphne Baker. Mm. Isn't she the debutante that Julia wanted you to marry? Oh, she had some kind of an idea about it. Mm. That means Daphne is inside at Julia and Hartley's. I'll get Julia for this. David, do I look all right? You look better than Daphne ever did. Darling, that's very sweet of you. Well, if it isn't David... Come in. Well, hello. Are you butling today, Reggie? No, just avoiding making my entrance for as long as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie, I'd like you to meet uh, Claudia, my wife. Claudia, this is Reggie Finch. Hello, Mr. Finch. Happy New Year. Oh, I'd forgotten you got married. Hello. Very happy indeed. David, how did you get roped into this? Into what? Oh, I didn't mean you, my dear. Well, it sounded as if you did. You certainly did. I meant roped into coming here today. You're, you're sure now that that's what you mean? <laughs> oh, my, yes, I'm sure. Your wife's charming and very beautiful. Oh, I say, is Daphne going to be here? Daphne? Now, Reggie, you don't look too happy about something. Coming to this recital by Julia's latest protege, a musicale on New Year's afternoon. Imagine. Oh, music, huh? 
You'd think Julie would realize that today we've got quite enough music in our own heads as it is. <laughs> well, I'm half tempted to turn around and go home. Oh, Why we? can't Julia leave music in the concert hall where it belongs? Then you go in when you want to and leave if you want to. It's a disease with Julia, and on New Year's Day. It's sure to prove fatal with me. I thought you liked music, I love it, but I hate sitting around trying to look appreciative. David, you haven't changed at all, thank goodness. Uh, We've sat through any number of Julia's music hours, haven't we? (laughs) Too many, and this is the last one. Oh, that's what I always say, but here I am. By the way, you weren't up in Newport at all last summer, were you? No, I escaped. I got married. Uh, Newport really isn't the same as it used to be before the war. Not the same at all. Mm, That's good. Well, we might as well go in and face the music. As long as he doesn't play any louder, it'll be all right. We'd better stay out here until he's finished. I wish Julie had an old pair of earmuffs kicking around with an ice bag attached. <laughs> Shh. David, he's playing the Beethoven minuet. I used to play that on the piano. You used to play that. Of course, it didn't sound this way, but it was my thousand-dollar piece. When we get a piano, darling, I'll play it for you. I can hardly wait. Shh. <laughs> David, point Daphne out to me. Pointing is rude. Can't you wait? If I point her out to you, you tell me if I'm right? I will not. Is that she over there on the corner of the sofa, that pretty blonde girl? The one without too much charm? You are a mean little hussy. Then that is Daphne. Poor Daphne. Why poor Daphne? No charm. And no you. That's our cue. Take a deep breath. In we go. Claudia, David. Ah, you're here. Hello, Julia. Happy New Year, Julia. Don't I get greeted, Julia? Of course, Reggie. So glad to see you. Oh, you're not looking very well. I'm not feeling very well. (laughs) Fine way to start the New Year. Hello there, my dear. Hello, Hart. Hello, You're just in time for one more piece. I'm sorry you couldn't hear the rest. It was marvelous. Oh, I'm sorry we're late, Julia. No matter. Reggie, you come over here. There's a place right next to Daphne just for you. Uh, Claudia, David... Uh, We'll sit down right here, Julia. This will be fine. Good. We'll talk later. Move over a little, my dear. Make room for me. I'd love to. Come on, Hartley, sit down. Well, everybody, we're going to have a piece de resistance now. Mr. Abraham Goldman, a distinguished graduate of the Yale Conservatory and the Peabody Institute, will give us his very special and widely known rendition of the Horace Staccato, as transcribed by Yasha Heifetz from the original composition by Denisio. Well, I've heard this on the violin, hardly, but never on the organ. I hope he hasn't bitten off more than he can chew. It's going to be tough. Well, it's his neck. Do please go right ahead, Mr. Goldman. And now, Mr. Goldman. Thank you. 
wonderful. Made it. Good boy. There was never any doubt about it once he'd started. He's got a beautiful technique, Hartley. An amazingly facile touch. Excellent. Really excellent. I'd like to hear him play some Bach. I've got to hand it to Julia. She put one over on us this time. Well, I'm afraid that's all we can ask of you, Mr. Goldman. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, Hartley, my dear, would you mind coming over here a moment? No, not at all. I, I, I'll be back in a moment. Don't you run away. Even Reggie Finch seemed to enjoy it. And Daphne. She had such a dreamy look. Poor Daphne. Julia's arranging things between her and Reggie Finch now. Will you stop calling her poor Daphne? She's got about three million dollars to play around <gasps> with. Three million dollars? You've got that. You don't need charm. You little cat. Oh, darling, maybe Julia was right. Maybe you should have married Daphne. No, I'll make my first three million myself, thank you. <laughs> but, David, think of all the people she could have introduced you to. She must have terrific connections. And even if Newport isn't the way it was before the war, still it is Newport, isn't it? And Coney Island is still Coney Island, and I prefer Coney Island. You mean you think I'm Coney Island? <laughs> you really, darling? Here comes Daphne now. How do I look? Got whiskers and a long, furry tail. David! Well, that wasn't bad, was it? David, I stayed awake very nicely. Mm, hello, Daphne. David, you're looking marvelous. And is this Claudia? It is. Hello. I've heard a lot about you. I've been wanting to call you to give you my very best wishes for a very happy life. Well, that's very nice of you, Daphne. Well, uh, I... I uh, oh, excuse me. Excuse me? Well, you look very well, Daphne. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, but I see the eggnog bowl is about to make its appearance. I'll be right back. Oh, uh... Oh, David, my boy. Oh, hello, Hartley. I've been wanting to talk to you. As you know, uh, probably Roger's off to be a party. David? No, yes, David. Marriage seems to agree with David. Oh, do you really think so? Oh, I do really think so. He has the look of a happy man. Julia told me he's become a partner in Roger's firm. Yes, it happened Christmas Eve. It was quite a surprise for us. Really? Well, not to me. I expected it for David. He's such a talented architect. How nice of you to say that. David and I are old friends. I know. You've known him a lot longer than I have. You probably even know a lot more about him than I do. I know so little of David's world before I met him. It happens. I've always been very fond of David. Of course, I only said a few words to Reggie Finch as he came in, but I think he's very nice, too. Reggie? Mm -hmm. He's sweet. He's always been sweet. I prefer my dogs. Dogs? Have you got a lot of dogs? Well, I breed them. I must have about 100 by now. 100? Of course, I don't keep that number. I sell them or... Read them for friends. One hundred dogs. I've only got one. Do you show him? I only just got him. I, I don't think dogs like to be shown. Oh, my dogs seem to love it. They're French poodles. You mean the dogs without anything in the back? Mm. Our dog is a Great Dane. A Great Dane? Yes. Well, what's it like to own a Great Dane? Wonderful and exhausting. <laughs> David adores him. It must be... Uh... Rather overpowering. I might even like it. I don't think a man should be without a Great Dane. Well, maybe someday I'll have a Great Dane. Goodbye, Claudia. It's been nice meeting you. Oh, Daphne, are you leaving? Uh, I'm meeting Mother for dinner. But isn't Reggie taking you home? Oh, don't bother him. He seems to be having such a nice time. Well, hello. How's my debutante wife? David. Poor Daphne. Are you still saying poor Daphne? When I first saw her, I guess I was a little catty. But now I know all she's got is no charm. Three million dollars, 100 poodles, and, and, and Julia trying to marry her off to Reggie Finch. Everybody's always trying to marry poor Daphne off. She was in love with you. Don't we know anybody good for her? Now, Claudia, don't you too? You know that when you try and fix something up for somebody, it, it never works out. David, if somebody tried to fix us up, would we have worked? I doubt it. You do? How can you say such a thing? But look, darling, 
since nobody tried to fix us up, since we just happened, how would you like to go home? I'd love to go home. I wanted to go home in the beginning. <laughs> This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Happy New Year, friends. Your bottler of Coca-Cola and the cast of Claudia are happy to greet you on this first day of what we all hope will be a better year for the whole world. And we regard it as a privilege that we've been able to spend some time this happy holiday with you and your family. Syndicated directly to radio stations on transcription disc, Claudia, uh, which was a spin-off of an earlier show, uh, it, it certainly was delightful and a much different soap opera than many. Yeah, there were the trials and tribulations, but quite frankly, they were all very lighthearted. Claudia, from uh, January 1st, 1948. Hope you'll take a moment to visit uh, our website, which is classicradio.stream. There you can stream our shows on demand. You can learn more about building your own classic radio collection. And you can contact me there, classicradio.stream, the best place to stay in touch with us. And please thank this radio station and support their advertisers. It is their kindness and courtesy that allows us to be with you each and every time. We come around. I'm Wyatt Cox. Please tell all your friends the great radio shows are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater on your favorite radio station. <laughs> 